Right, good afternoon. National Assembly for Wales is now in session. And the first item this afternoon is questions to the First Minister. Question one is Russell George. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Will the First Minister make a statement on the provision of urgent health care in Mid Wales? Yes, we're committed to ensuring patients in Wales receive safe, sustainable and high quality urgent health care in a timely manner and in the most appropriate setting. Uh, thank you for your answer, First Minister. As you will know, that services in Shropshire are being subject to review with initial proposals, uh, including the creation of an emergency centre for the treatment of serious uh, injuries. Uh, the centre will be supported uh, by between four and seven, uh, seven urgent care centres, but unfortunately, despite cross-border agreements, none of these are in Montgomeryshire. Uh, will you commit to exploring the feasibility of an urgent care centre to serve the 63,000 people living in my constituency? Well, we always give consideration to such things, but of course, uh, what is absolutely crucial is your constituents are able to access health services in England as they always have done. They are not, to use the phrase of the moment, refugees. They are people who have always used the health service uh, in England, as there are people who use the health service in Wales who come from England. And I certainly hope that any changes now that Shropshire, of course, have come out of the difficulties that they faced uh, a short while ago, uh, will be of benefit to uh, the uh, people of Montgomeryshire. And I'm sure that the Health Minister will give consideration to uh, what else needs to be done in the future in order to improve their medical care, such as, for example, what we're doing with the Emergency Medical Retrieval and Transfer Service. Simon Thomas. Uh, uh, we're looking about people need dog. My plight can be with the Gwalo and Gasson and Voyam of the Gon and Hammy at Recruitio. Uh, he that will and a Hunegol, uh, Drostro and Schoiger, my colleague, Mithaginiath Brees, with the Bunrano and Mirkukutio Benodol, uh, Emoy Naden Show, but Digon or Goval Brees Sigal uh, and Akides in Hunu. A Dihunan man or a Mirkukutio de Hinaid van Hinning and me have it, are a key to get a colleague. We wouldn't be thinking of a colleague at Monsica High Board, na the Gon of Toria and Hamri, but there I love an Evany E. E. Naid. I got to go board board now the Huech Cant, Tia now the Huech Cant, or so the Woody Carl Isano. Question two, Mohammed Ashka. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. Will the First Minister provide an update on the Welsh Government's policies to promote digital inclusion in Wales, please? Yes, the Digital Inclusion Delivery Plan was updated in the summer. Uh, this reflected on the good progress that has been made in promoting digital inclusion and, of course, it remains a fundamental part of our programme for government. Thank you for the reply, Minister. According to the Disability Wales, an estimated 40% of disabled people do not have access to the internet compared to just 12% of non-disabled people in Wales. They are concerned that moving public services online mean many disabled people are prevented from accessing them. What action will his government take to help disabled people get access to digital services here in Wales? Well, a lot of the services that are moving online are doing so as a result of his party's policies, but uh, I'm not sure I'm mindful of that. But I, but I can uh, offer the, uh, the member some comfort. Communities 2.0, of course, has helped 50,000 individuals since its inception. Uh, disabled people and older people have been helped by it. And uh, I can say, uh, Chloe, that Communities 2.0 has worked in close partnership with key disabled people's groups to help disabled people to benefit their lives through technology. Uh, for example, I was pleased to hear that the RNIB have bid successfully for uh, the Lottery's Basic Online Skills funding, and that was based on a Communities 2.0 project that was developed in Wales. Mike Hedges. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Does the First Minister agree with me that the provision of broadband connections to the internet within libraries is a major contribution to digital inclusion? Yes, I do. We know that libraries play a vital role in tackling digital exclusion. They provide the free community access that so many people need in a safe environment. And, of course, uh, assistance to those who are not familiar uh, with digital technology and particularly with the, uh, the internet. And of course, one of the most pleasing developments uh, that there have been over the past few years is the uh, expansion of libraries into digital technology to enable people to use their services as fully as possible. Clear Griffith. Uh, with my firm, of course, I've been here in Gorvod, Devnadio, Gossanith Arlene, or Gaver, Hawley Taliadek, and the Blan. Now, Marsumidia did not positive, of course, on the reality. You, my higher Dalloy, the new higher Dwethavi than Kalman, a diad, uh, Ibandla Dan, or the Hinkredi Vesli, but then Rasamoli, Gadu Elven, or Gishade Papir, or Gaver, or Haisi, where the Askai Wuya. Well, I want to use the first name of the 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 name of the
I traws newid er bydd mis medi y flwyddyn nesa, a fyddwn yn meddwl bod nawr dych chweich y cant o adeiladau yn cael mynediad i'r band eang, ac wrth gwrs ni'n ystyried beth allwn ni'n neud gyda'r pedair y cant sydd yn rôl. Jeff Cuthbert. Diolch, Llywydd. First Minister, quite rightly, uh, digital literacy and internet access are crucial to everyday life now, not just in terms of workplace skills, but in access for everyday tasks, and therefore I fully support Committee's 2.0. But do you agree with me, First Minister, that it is crucial that we ensure that there is joined up working between schemes like <coughs> Committee's 2.0 and our superfast Cymru broadband rollout to make sure that those in our most disadvantaged communities are not left out of the digital advances? Indeed so, I couldn't agree uh, more. That is vital. We know, of course, that for many people, once their interest is stimulated, they go on and take uh, full advantage then, of course, of uh, improved digital services, particularly those that Superfast Broadband can provide. And for me, the two of them run very much together. We now move to questions of the party leaders. And first this afternoon, Leader of the Opposition, Andrew R.G. Davis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, First Minister, your budget that was laid two weeks ago uh, meted out special treatment for the rural affairs element of that budget. Uh, it had a cut of nearly 18% and 20% cut for animal health in that particular budget. Why was rural affairs singled out for such special treatment in that budget? It wasn't. Farmers, of course, continue to receive the subsidies over £200 million a year from the uh, European Union. And these have been very difficult times, of course, uh, for uh, the government here in Wales, and we've had to take difficult decisions in order to provide the extra money for health, which I'm sure he will welcome. Of course, we welcome any additional money for health, and it's something we've been telling you from the start of this Assembly, First Minister. But only 12 weeks ago, your then Minister for Rural Affairs launched a food and drink strategy that aimed for a 30% growth in output, a 10% growth in GVA for the rural economy, uh, and ultimately, 12 weeks later, your government has signalled a near 20% cut in that particular budget. Can you not understand why people feel rather bemused in the rural economy that such, in fairness, positive signals are given one week and then such ne negative signals are given another week? Isn't your government all over the place on this? No, we have to take difficult decisions, as he will uh, know. We haven't taken the decision to cut education by 20%, as he wanted, or indeed local government by 12%, as he wanted, or indeed social services by 12%, as he wanted. But I, I, I understand, of course, that cuts have to come uh, somewhere. We've had uh, cuts of 10% in our budget from his party over the last four years, and that has meant that difficult decisions have had to be made. We will continue to uh, promote, of course, Welsh food and drink around the world, as we always have done, and as evidenced by the fact that the, the uh, food hall the Royal Welsh Show continues to grow and new buildings are needed every year. First Minister, as someone who is very intricately related to the Royal Welsh Show, as my father was one of the directors, I know full well that the success of the Royal Welsh Show is based on the volunteers and the people yeah, who put yeah. their hands in their pockets to pay for it, yeah, yeah. rather than any initiatives that you might be trying to bandwagon on. The fact of the matter is, First Minister, the fact of the matter is, First Minister, Order. I want your to hear what the... government for some I'm unknown reason, and I'm quite happy to say the food and drink sector has been a notable success. It accounts for nearly 20% of manufacturing jobs here in Wales. Yep. Yep. It has an aim of £7 billion growth by 2020. These are all laudable uh, aims, and only 12 weeks ago you were trying to encapsulate that in a plan. But then you're doing this to the budget. None of it seems to make sense. You seem to be chasing the press releases one minute yes. and actually ducking the difficult questions yes. the next. Why are you turning your back on the rural economy? But importantly, why are you turning your back on creating those jobs in the food and drink sector that the rural economy will desperately need to raise the GVA we all want to see and, above all, the overall output of the rural economy? Yeah, yeah. I, think he, I think he misunderstands the point I was making. Over the last decade, I have seen the numbers of uh, producers increase exponentially in Wales to the extent that the Royal Welsh Show has difficulty accommodating them, which is a good thing, uh, of course, for the industry itself. I expect that to continue in the future. Nevertheless, it is true to say uh, that there have been uh, cuts in budgets across government, apart from, of course, in health. But we cannot create money where money does not exist. We've received a 10% cut over four years uh, from his uh, party, and we have to prioritise uh, in the way that we think the people of Wales would want us to prioritise. That has meant, of course, finding more money for the NHS and shielding the people of Wales from the worst cuts that he wanted to impose with his shadow budget three years ago. We now move to questions from the leader of the Liberal Democrats, Kirsty Williams. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, yesterday the second report by the Social Mobility and Child Poverty Commission was published. On vocabulary standards, it states that at the age of three, Scotland has the highest scores. It goes on to say, but by the age of five, children in England have closed that gap with Scotland, but children in Wales are falling behind. First Minister, when do you believe the actions taken by your government will enable Welsh children to perform the same as children in Scotland and in England? Well, first of all, of course, the uh, report praised Flying Start and the work that, that has done in order to assist so many uh, of our young people. Uh, I have no doubt that the People Deprivation Grant will assist, and that, of course, is a policy that, uh, you know, it's right to say, originated with her party and one that we've been able to take forward working with her. Uh, and I can say that the revised child poverty strategy, which will be published for consultation next month, will seek to address uh, those issues in order to ensure that uh, we in Wales certainly are not left behind. Minister, Flying Start has existed for a number of years now, but the evidence suggests that Wales' children are not catching up. It's all very well having a programme, but if the programme doesn't deliver improvements, then it's really not helping our children. Those poorest children will then go on to suffer poorer GCSE results. Just 26% of children eligible for free school meals achieve five good GCSEs, including English and maths, compared to 38% of similar children in England. Now, the report says, and I quote, that that situation is unacceptable and means that too many children in Wales are being let down by the existing school system and change is urgently needed. Now, apart from agreeing, as you've stated, to implement the Welsh Liberal Democrat Pupil Deprivation Grant, what are you going to do to ensure that Wales gets the change that Alan Milburn says is so urgently required? Through the Pupil Deprivation Grant, of course, through the Child Poverty Strategy, through the uh, Foundation Phase, which is yet, of course, to work through fully in terms of the beneficial effect it will have on our young uh, people. Uh, we know, of course, it's important as well to support more young people into higher education. We know that the, uh, the rate of young people going into higher education has increased. These things do take, of course, some time to work through, but nevertheless we are clear that uh, we have a child poverty strategy and actions on the ground uh, that will ensure that the young people of Wales are not left behind. Three weeks ago I highlighted the abandonment of your long-cherished PISA target as another example of the poverty of ambition that characterises much of your approach. Now yesterday Alan Milburn agreed with that and he said and I quote again, we are concerned about the lack of ambition in the new international target set for 2020. We do not think that they are aspirational enough given the scale of the issue that faces Wales. I ask you again, First Minister, why can't you and your administration strive for excellence instead of aiming for mediocrity? We never aim for mediocrity. Those of us who have been through the state system and are grateful for the opportunities it afforded to us will never lose sight of that. Uh, it is something that is very close to my heart in terms of looking after children particularly, and we are moving forward with plans to help them uh, in terms of ensuring that our schools have the support and money they require, and Schools Challenge Cymru is one of the most effective ways of making sure that those who come from the most deprived backgrounds are able to get the help that they need. We've invested in new facilities, new schools across Wales that are right far in excess of what is happening in England. We are seeing the gap in terms of performance closing, and closing, I believe, rapidly. We have the strategy, as I said, that's being announced next week, and we have, of course, the Pupil Deprivation Grant. All these things, I believe, will see a real and beneficial improvement for our young people over the next few years. And finally, the Leader of Fly Cymru, Leanne Wood. <coughs> First Minister, neither of us will take pleasure in the Tory press trying to turn our health service into a political football. But patients in Wales will be alarmed and they have genuine concerns that deserve to be taken seriously and addressed in full. One question that is asked is why do waiting times for diagnostic tests remain unacceptably long in Wales compared to Scotland and England? Do you attribute this to funding alone or do you accept that there are wider issues? I think there are issues of demand. We have provided £6.5 million pounds of diagnostics, uh, £425 million pounds extra, of course, to the NHS. Demand does increase at uh, a huge rate. Uh, that's not entirely uh, true just of Wales, of course, but nevertheless, it is something we face. We have a higher proportion of older people. We have a higher proportion of people who are not um, uh, in good health. 
and of course we don't have the 300 million pounds that a funding reform would give us. Now I don't pretend in any way that, that it buys to, uh, to say that the Welsh NHS doesn't have its difficulties, it clearly does, it clearly does. We as a government are committed to dealing with those difficulties. What we won't do though is play politics with the issue of people's health. Surely, First Minister, if demand has increased, it will have increased uh, everywhere, and surely you mm. won't deny the facts. 1% waited over six weeks for an MRI scan in England last August. Just over 2% waited longer than six weeks in Scotland for an M MRI scan. Over 40% waited longer than six weeks here in Wales. Aren't we now at a point, though, where, as well as patients having serious concerns, our health workers are increasingly demoralised too? Well, I think constant attacks from papers outside Wales will demoralise them. And I can say that the Minister has written to them all uh, today just to uh, say to them that uh, these are not the views of the Welsh Government. But what I can say, of course, yeah, let's not minimise the difficulties that exist in some parts of the health service. They're there. And I don't uh, pretend in any way that the health service in Wales is perfect, but it's not in England. We only saw last week Hereford County Hospital being described as inadequate and uh, unsafe. And many Welsh patients go to Hereford County Hospital from eastern Breconshire. But let me give you some examples of a recent survey that was carried out where it was said there were countless, countless examples of outstanding practice. Nine times out of ten, the care patients receive is exceptional. The vast majority of the sample group were happy with the level of care they received. 77% of people in Mundershire, for example, felt their GP's surgery offered convenient appointments higher than any other part of Wales. And 74% of respondents reported high standards of cleanliness in the hospital environment. Uh, those are some examples of um, what I would say, that the vast majority of people get the best care most of the time. And what we must focus on is ensuring that those people who don't get the level of care that they should expect that those, con those concerns are dealt with and we ensure that the numbers of people in that category continue to drop. The First Minister should take very seriously his responsibilities to both patients and staff in the Welsh Health Service. He will be fully aware that a strike ballot uh, resulted in four to one in favour of strike action by Unison members in the Welsh Health Service. Does the First Minister agree with Unison that our health workers are worth more than the one-off £160 payment that's being offered to them by this government? Well, first of all, negotiations continue to take place, as the member would expect. These are difficult times because we know that even though that uh, more money has been allocated for health, we must make sure that uh, a substantial amount of that money goes on services. Uh, and it is difficult, of course, uh, in the financial circumstances that we find ourselves in to ensure that that happens. But let's not prejudge things. Um, there's already been a strike in England and Northern Ireland. Uh, discussions will continue in Wales. I know the Health Minister will continue to, to do that. Incidentally, the quotations that I gave you in terms of satisfaction were from the Conservative Health Survey. Uh, so even their own survey tends to undermine what they have been saying. But I, I do accept, and I thank... I thank the Leader of Plaid Cymru in the, in the way that she's raised these issues. They are important issues, and from time to time we must deal with difficult questions in the NHS. But she has done it in such a way uh, that has not turned this into a political football, unlike, of course, the Daily Mail and the Department of Health. Can I just remind members that um, some people have their names down to speak later on? So um, if they can not stop muttering, they will be called. Question three, Ellen Jones. Pavisere gallywodrydd Cymru eu cymryd i ymddiffyn y dywydiant amethyddol yn wyneb cwymp dywydd ar mewn incwm i nifer o ffermwyr. Wna i gwybod yn ystod uh, y flwyddyn ar iawn o dwetha, oedd uh, incwm ffermwyr wedi codi o 32,000. Mi'n wir i wneud â hynny'n bryd wrth bod cwmp wedi bod yn y pris o gig o'n. Ond gael dweud, uh, wrth gwrs, uh, bod na uh, Symud mi'n i gymryd lle ynglyn â chi idon a hefyd adolygiad o'r diwydiant llath i weld beth arall y llwn i'n neud. Prif fynd i'n dweud bydych chi'n gwybod fod um, nifer yn ffermwyr llath ni yn wynebu prisiau anwadal iawn a prisiau sy'n cwympo'r un o bryd ac yn aml iawn mae'r prisiau hynny yn cael ei effeithio gan y pris byd-eu angam uh, lath. Ond er mwyn sefydlogi, sefyllfa, yn ffermwyr llath ni dros y tymor hir, ydych chi'n credu bod i nawr yn amser i edrych tuag at gydyn debe gorfodol rhwng ffermwyr a phroseswyr llath. Er mwyn cynnal y sefydlogrwydd yna ac erbyn hyn mae deuddeg o aelod wladwriaeth 
Gwythir and Debyw'r y Peth wedi symud lawr y trywydd hyn a dwi'n gobeithio fyddwch chi fel llywodraeth yn edrych ar hyn hefyd. Well, un o'r gwynt i ddydd, gos, yw beth i gweithio yn un ar MMB, unwaith a'th hwnna, felly uh, oedd yna broblemau mawr i uh, ffermwyr llath. Bydd yn i o blaid rhoi mwy o nerth i ffermwyr llath. Dwi'n meddwl bod y llwn i wneud yng Nghymru ac ateb debyg gorfodol. Uh, dwi'n gweld achos rhywbeth masnachol iwe, ond gaeth weid wi'n deall yn, 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 yn dda dros ben. Bod yn anodd dros ben lle mae unigolyn yn gwerthu i gwmni mawr, yn anelu mawr gwendid. Uh, so felly unrhyw beth sy'n rhoi nerth i ffermwyr, bydd yn i yn gefnogol o. Os oes yna ffordd i sicrhau bod ffermwyr yn cael pris teg trwy, trwy, uh, trwy'r cytun debyg maen nhw'n arwyddo, felly bydd yna rhywbeth bydd yn i mwyn ystyried fel llywodraeth wrth gofio rhwystrau ar y pwerus i gyda ni, ond mae hwnnw'n rhywbeth dylai ddigwydd o'r gwrs dros yn fy marni y dynnu sy'n edrych yn gyfan gwbl. Mae'n George. Um, First Minister, the red meat industry in Wales is losing around one million every year uh, as a result of the way in which the promotional levy works in practice. Uh, do you agree that a North Wales abattoir and reform of the meat uh, promotional levy are ways in which we can ensure we keep money in Wales and reinvest to support our farmers? And can I ask, how is the Welsh Government working with the UK Government to bring this about? Well, the UK Government have indicated no interest in, uh, in this area. Uh, they tend, of course, to support the bigger farmers, particularly Arab, but we know that from, uh, from experience <laughs> over the last decade. Uh, in terms of red meat, of course, we know the price of lamb has dropped recently. That's because it's been a very good summer. And there's been a level of oversupply in the market, together, of course, with the strength of the pound, which never helps in terms of, of exports. Uh, in terms of beef, we know that cattle prices have shown signs of improvement throughout last month and this uh, month. Uh, but, of course, what we uh, will continue to do is, uh, as we have done successfully over the past decade or so, is to promote uh, Welsh red meat. And that, of course, has led us to uh, new markets ahead of other parts of the UK in years gone by. William Powell. Returning uh, for a moment to the uh, issue of the dairy sector, First Minister, um, it's, um, it's been the case that uh, in other areas, for example, uh, free-range eggs and also through the red tractor scheme, there's been great benefit uh, derived to the industry in terms of increasing loyalty from customers who are prepared to pay an additional amount for a reliable quality product. Do you think uh, that there is in fact scope for this to be extended more in the dairy sector to actually provide greater resilience to the industry which at this moment is, provide, is uh, facing such difficult times? Yes, I do. Branding is the key for farming in Wales. Uh, if we competed purely in terms of commodities, uh, or as a commodity, we'd be wiped out by producers who will always be able to compete at a level far below our farmers are able to do, New Zealand being one example of it. So the key for us is, is getting over that problem by having a high quality product that is branded and marketed uh, aggressively. It's happening now with milk. We see it now on, on the shelves where we have, for example, Calon Wen uh, as uh, an organic producer and, of course, the, the non-organic Welsh branded milk that we see in our supermarkets. Uh, in an entirely non-scientific survey, I do notice in uh, Bridgen's supermarkets that the milk from Wales goes first and that, must, that of course, I very much welcome. <laughs> but that, of course, is a small market. What we need to do as well, of course, is to promote Wales as a brand, an international brand, to make sure that uh, the market goes beyond the Welsh market. Trickier with milk, because, of course, liquid milk doesn't travel in the same way as, as uh, processed dairy products. But nevertheless, it's, uh, it, it's very heartening to see that Welsh milk is now being differentiated and branded. But at the end of the day, there are still problems, and those problems uh, revolve around how does an individual get a fair price from a big buyer. Since the Milk Marketing Board was destroyed, that question still remains unanswered by successive UK governments. Question four, Jenny Rathbone. Uh, what work is the Welsh Government doing to protect young people from online sexual abuse? Well, we continue to work with the National Crime Agency and the police to target and arrest perpetrators of online sexual abuse as part of national and international investigations. And here in Wales, we are educating parents and children to recognise and respond to inappropriate online behaviour. Uh, recent Cardiff University research indicates that children, young people as young as 13, are being pressurised to have sex. And in the most serious uh, cases, um, young people are being groomed online to enter into prostitution. Now, the Sexual Offences Act 2003 predates the widespread use of the internet and the current offence of grooming requires an offender to set out on a journey to meet a 
a child. Um, in light of yesterday's announcement that the National Crime Agency is not finds it unrealistic to chase the 50,000 people who've engaged in online child abuse, what work do you think the go our government can do um, to respond to the NSPCC call for further legislation? They're calling on, obviously on the UK government to take further action to protect young people. But if the UK government doesn't um, take action, what could be done, uh, for example, to amend the, um, the, the Violence Against Women Bill um, well, to mean, ensure that this is addressed? Uh, we have to bear in mind, of course, first of all, that there are limits on what we can do, given the fact that there are limits on the uh, maximum sentences that we can create uh, under the criminal law. Uh, so inevitably, uh, the UK government will have stronger powers, unlike, of course, in Scotland, well, it is different than Northern Ireland in this area. Can we say we welcome the UK government's proposed amendments in the Criminal Justice and Courts Bill? Now, that will, for example, reduce the number of initial occasions when a perpetrator must meet or communicate with children from two to one in order for an offence to be uh, created. So that is the, if I could put this, the easiest way of making sure that this issue is dealt with uh, through the criminal ju justice system. However, in terms of our own bill, the Gender-Based Violence, Domestic Abuse and Sexual Violence Wales Bill, there is work underway in terms of ensuring that we can uh, promote uh, healthy relationships in the future and, of course, to address violence against women, domestic abuse and sexual violence. When it comes to the, uh, the criminal side, it's inevitable that the UK government will have more powers than us, but we will work with them, of course, in order to make sure that our children are safe. Jonathan Saunders. There are two to three teenagers now in the UK, including Wales, reporting experiences of trolling, online bullying and sexual abuse. The UK Government Minister, the Right Honourable Chris Grayling MP, has actually now made announcements that he's going to impose higher fines and indeed take sentences up from six months to two years for very serious uh, sort of... Uh, accounts. Um, will the First Minister join me in welcoming this positive initiative and will you pledge your support to working with the UK Government on this issue that is really affecting so many of our young people now here in Wales? Yes, that's an important point the Member raises uh, and I can say that we will work of course uh, with the UK Government uh, to ensure that our young people, particularly young teenagers who are perhaps at their most vulnerable time of life in many, many ways, certainly in terms of their, of their development, that they receive the full protection that they should be entitled to. Okay. Bethan Jenkins. First Minister, you may have seen this morning that an online avatar called Sweetie, created by the Dutch charity Ter de Hom, um, to identify paedophiles um, who use online chat rooms, has secured its first conviction. Um, that man was an Australian, um, but the charity involved has said that it has passed 110 um, British men uh, it identified to the National Crime Agency. So I'm just wondering whether you as a government are aware that any of those uh, men um, are Welsh and whether you have had any dealings with the police um, to see how we can progress this because um, I listened to BBC Radio 4 uh, this morning and they were saying by the charity that one arrest simply isn't good enough. I, I'm not aware of uh, any convictions of anybody from Wales uh, but I think at best it's, it's an important issue and there are, there are issues of detail that the member will need to know. If I, if I write to the, uh, the member with further information I think that hopefully will uh, provide it with uh, answers uh, to the question that she's asked. Question five, Mick Anthony. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Will the First Minister give an assessment of the potential for economic cooperation between Wales uh, and South West England? Yes, I understand the Cardiff Capital Region uh, Board are continuing to uh, consider appropriate opportunities to uh, build uh, linkages beyond the Cardiff Capital uh, Region, and that would inevitably mean not just looking west, but uh, east across the Severn as well. Well, thank you for the answer, First Minister. Uh, there are already a significant academic, economic, transport and energy links between Wales and the South West. Uh, do you agree with me that uh, should there be devolution to the regions of England, that this would actually open the door to tremendous new opportunities for uh, joint economic and social cooperation? It, it might well do that at the moment. It's difficult to do it, of course. The English authorities are uh, smaller and have far fewer powers, with some exceptions, Manchester, of course, being one uh, cluster of authorities where they have worked very well uh, together. So it may well be that if there were to be, for example, regional devolution in England, that those linkages could be strengthened. 
Uh, nevertheless, uh, there are uh, L examples of cooperation between Cardiff and Bristol. For example, Cardiff and Bristol airports have worked together uh, in terms of uh, working to uh, develop uh, plans for hosting uh, big sporting events uh, in the future, uh, with the understanding, of course, that both airports are, are well able to uh, bring in the crowds. Aaron Davis. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, first Minister, leading on from that then, I'm sure you've been briefed, if not read the remarks of the, uh, the Bristol Mayor, uh, George Ferguson, about Cardiff and the Bristol regions needing to work together. Um, the Mayor suggested the creation of a, a seven region to provide a strong lobbying voice and critical mass to secure investment. Will you outline your government's position of cross-border cooperation and specifically whether you support the seven region in principle? Well, we've done it, of course, uh, in the North East and the linkages with Merseyside, uh, and that's something that uh, we accept. The economic uh, region go in, in any uh, set of countries goes beyond mere political boundaries. That much is true, and we look to work with our neighbours uh, across the border uh, whenever we, uh, we can. It's quite difficult, of course, because there's no equivalent body, uh, certainly in the southwest of England, that we can work with. There is a, a putative body in the northwest of England, that much is true. Uh, but it would certainly be more useful from our point of view if we were able to, uh, to work with a cluster of authorities. But of course we'll work with uh, authorities such as uh, Bristol where we can for the mutual benefit of both. Uh, does the First Minister agree that the Seven Bridge tolls uh, is a tax on Welsh businesses, uh, that it should be devolved to Welsh Government and that Plaid Cymru's proposal to cut the toll to £2 for cars with the corresponding cuts for commercial vehicles would be an important step towards uh, levelling the playing field between businesses in Wales and the south-west of England? Yes, I do, very much so. Indeed, uh, the Member will know some months ago uh, we declared very publicly that we believe that the tolls should be in the hands of the Welsh Government. Uh, we believe that we could reduce the tolls. At the same time, of course, it was important to raise enough money for the maintenance of the bridges, not just the one bridge, but two, uh, the two bridges. They, they come together. Uh, of course, at the time, the view of the Department of Transport was that they would control the tolls, the level of the tolls, and all the income from the tolls would be spent on roads in England. As the member can imagine, this was not something that found favour with us as a government. Uh, it's important that uh, the money that those tolls raise is applied for the maintenance of the bridges and, of course, that uh, we are able to look at reducing the tolls in order to reduce the burden on Welsh business. He's quite right uh, that w when the, the tolls come back to public ownership, it is absolutely essential that it does not come back to the public ownership solely of Whitehall. Helen Parrott. Uh, with, um, thank Kareen Apiorwith for, for raising the issue of the tolls, though I'm disappointed that he only wants to cut it to four times the cost of maintenance. According to a Welsh Government report published in uh, November 2012, scrapping the tolls altogether would boost the Welsh economy by £107 million a year, and the operating costs of the bridges are just £12 million a year, including the cost of collecting the tolls themselves. So with a likely return on investment of 9 to 1, wouldn't you agree that scrapping the seven tolls altogether would be a cost-effective way to boost the Welsh economy if control of the bridges were devolved. I have to say to the member that the Department of Transport has produced wildly varying estimates on the uh, maintenance cost of the bridge. 12 million, I've seen 20 million, I've seen higher than that. The first thing we'd have to do is establish what the true cost is of maintenance of the two bridges and then of course take a sensible decision as to what is affordable, uh, what we can offer to Welsh businesses while at the same time not taking on board uh, a significant uh, liability. Uh, which at this present time would be difficult for us to afford. So firstly, there needs to be an understanding of what the true cost of maintenance of the bridges actually is. There would need to be surveys to make sure that structurally the bridges were sound, and then, of course, an assessment can be made on what the level of the toll should be. Question six, John Griffiths. Will the First Minister make a statement on the implications for Wales of the Scottish referendum? Well, uh, significant the word that I use to the member. Of course, there is a, a motion before us at five o'clock, roughly this afternoon, uh, that deals with constitutional reform. Uh, but what is absolutely crucial is that the aspirations and uh, views of all four nations within this union are met with Wales playing its full part. Will the First Minister also agree that an important part of the debate in Scotland was about fairness in terms of the distribution of political power, but also in terms of socio-economic factors, and that um, 
as the future of the UK is now to be determined, we need that fairness argument to be at the heart of the debate. And that is about new levers for Welsh Government and new support from UK Government to help build our economy. And that also applies to Scotland, the north of England and other parts of England. And if we don't have that fairness, the people of the UK are not going to value the UK and give it the support it needs in the future. I, I entirely agree. I mean, the member has raised before the issue of the UK government need re needing to rebalance the UK economy. He will, of course, share my deep concern at the UK government's proposals to uh, create redundancies in HMRC in uh, the west of, of, of our nation. But what is absolutely crucial is that there is a new constitutional settlement, a new union for the UK in order to make sure it is sustained in the future. If that doesn't happen, I have severe concerns about the future of the union. It must be understood in Whitehall that carrying on in the same old way is inadequate over the course of the next decade. We must have a constitutional settlement that's fair, that's settled and takes into account the views of all. Yeah. Um, First Minister, I wonder if I, you could tell us what discussions you've had with the Office of Budget Responsibility uh, about the enhanced role uh, that they will be playing following the, the next Assembly election and in the wake of the Scottish referendum with tax powers that are going to be coming to Wales after that next election. Uh, in the case of stamp duty, for instance, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that the forecasts have to be uh, exactly right or, or near enough because that will then be deter determine the amount that the block grant is reduced. So um, they are going to play an increasingly important role in Scotland. I, I wonder you, if you could tell us what discussions you've had about their role here. Yes, there have been discussions at official level with the OBR, and of course we're looking to see what role the OBR could play uh, as we uh, accumulate uh, tax varying powers. Absolutely crucial, as the member says, uh, that we're able to have a uh, robust mechanism in place to uh, uh, assess and predict the tax and take, and of course a mechanism for ensuring uh, that the, the methods that we use are robust, and the OBR of course may well play a role in that regard. Alan Fred Jones. In Canon, the referendum, or the David Gantry, or when it is a pretty predicting, never than a dim newid, he formula barnets in Cloycumbri, Mount Danariani, well, the Hirin with the Dwayne Lower Quaith, the Nassau, when you keep heavy, did you? Well, I have you in hand, no, in the double day, say, Kin, that's Ganyad Nagalunate. No, only the man. Venice Shara Gida, is them Shara the Prevoni dog? No, the Prevoni dog, Venice Shara, the Ed Miliban, Honan Weir. And uh, the Robert Gathy Nade, uh, Men Ruvat Obanic, Urth uh, Govio, Beth of the Polar Barn and Guaden, Aralban Ara Preed. Now, of course, the Snaven go quite busy with the weather, the Mish, and the Marni, but in Amlo Gew, where they would really can either Alban, where either they would call it Gadu or Alban, and doing them a middle day, uh, call uh, Setliad Take E Gumri. Uh, the Lunar, 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 Question seven, Peter Black. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Will the First Minister make a statement on Welsh Government policy on school absences? Well, of course, we all take absence from school seriously. There is strong evidence to show that it does affect uh, adversely an individual learner's attainment. And for that reason, of course, attendance does need to remain a priority to ensure that children and young people are given the chance to achieve their potential. Answer, First Minister. You will, of course, be aware of the advice from the Central South Consortium, which covers part of my region and, and your constituency, that parents should be sending children to school when they are suffering from illnesses such as glandular fever and tonsillitis, as well as infectious conditions such as conjunctivitis, slap cheek and hand, foot and mouth. Um, are you as concerned as I, First Minister, at the, this advice being given out to parents, particularly when a parent contacted me today to say that last week when she kept her child home, the, abs the um, school um, truancy officer called around, but when she sent the child in today, the school sent the child home because they were not able to administer antibiotics to them. How is this consortium uh, um, accountable and how can it be scrutinised for the sort of these sorts of decisions which seem to go against common sense for many parents? I I'm not aware of that. I have two children, of course, who live within that consortium. I've not seen that advice uh, myself. I'm sure I would have noticed it if I had. Uh, but I will ensure that the Minister writes uh, to uh, the member in order to provide clarification on this point. There does seem to be an element of confusion there uh, in terms of what the advice is, and it's important that advice is clarified. Mohammed Ashkar. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. First Minister, absence from school remains persistently higher in our deprived communities such as South Wales Valleys and inner cities. What studies his government has taken 
to discover and to tackle the root causes of absenteeism in these particular communities in South Wales? Well, the, the reasons for absenteeism can be uh, many and varied, but what's important, of course, is that we've provided money for uh, many schools in our more deprived areas through Schools Challenge Cymru to help them, of course, to address this and other issues, and we expect that, of course, to have a beneficial effect in terms of seeing attendance rates increase. Roger Glenn Thomas. Prewyd o'g ymar system fel ag ymae hi yn cynnig hyblygrwydd i brif y thrawon i ganiatau hyd at ddeg diwrnod o absen ôl deb. Ydych chi'n credu y dylai'r hawl a'r hyblygrwydd hwnnw aros gyda'r brif y thrawon? Yr ysyw, ar hyn rydym y mae'r ni lle dydw yna ddim i ddigwydd. Mae'n edrych fel bod brif y thrawon yn defnyddio'r caniatad hyn mewn ffordd synhwyrol. A felly ar hyn o bryd os ddim tystio olaethau fy marn i newid y system bresennol. Question 8, Sandy Mewys. Thank you, Presiding Officer. What action is the Welsh Government taking to reduce alcohol consumption in Wales? Well, we've taken a wide range of measures and they are set out in working together to reduce harm, which is our strategy for reducing substance misuse. Thank you. According to Public Health Wales, alcohol is responsible for around 1 in 20 of all deaths in Wales, that's 29 a week, and a higher proportion of children in Wales aged 11 to 16 are drinking alcohol than in England or Scotland. The Public Health White Paper has consulted on minimum unit pricing for alcohol, and as you know, this has been widely supported. Um, given the... Um, the, um, the consensus of many people um, agreeing with this action. Um, when can we see such a move being introduced as a step towards tackling the problem? Well, the issue, about the government's view is that minimum unit pricing is something we should move forward with. However, uh, it, this is now in the European Court of Justice, or the European Court of First Instance, if I remember rightly, uh, because of a challenge to the Scottish government's proposals uh, from the, the Scotch Whisky Association, I understand, and, and others. Uh, we now wait to see what the outcome of that judgment would be, because obviously it will have a direct effect on what we might want to do in Wales. So the matter now is, dare I say it, in the hands of the lawyers. Mark Isherwood. Thank you, Rachel. Well, pricing, of course, is linked to supply, but it's the causes of demand that um, need also to be addressed if we're to um, nip this uh, in the bud and tackle the horrendous figures we've just heard referred to. Uh, in, in March, the European Court of Audit, uh, after expressing concerns about Welsh Government audit of the substance misuse peer mentoring scheme in Wales, uh, prematurely ended uh, the scheme. Could you provide an update uh, on Welsh Government support utilising the European money uh, for peer mentoring uh, as we go forward? Well, what I can say to the member is that we have a number of schemes in place. The Change for Life Alcohol Programme, the Have a Word Brief Interventions Programme, uh, the delivery, of course, of the Strengthening Families uh, programme and, of course, our Healthy Working Wales uh, programme. In addition, our All Wales Schools Core Liaison programme operates in 99% of primary and secondary schools in Wales, and that does include advice for children and young people about alcohol uh, misuse. And we are working to develop a guide to provide parents with some top tips on how to discuss the dangers of alcohol with their uh, children. In the meantime, Public Health Wales have also been asked to consider the process is in place to review alcohol-related deaths to, with a view, of course, to improving prevention and response. Question 9, Alan Roberts. You're so with. Pardon, I have a day there, Gavard, a pre-winny dog, and he'll come in the year, Gaily Rice, Gamrag, and a bill continue. Never, or do I say, uh, Divna the old Gida Amru ran the Iliad Aramater. Prevenid o gynnwch neithwch chi addo i ystyried pob cam ymarferol ar gyfer atgyfnerthu'r Gymraeg o fewn y system gynllunio. Pa opsiynau gafodd eu hystyried felly, a fydd chi'n barod i gyhoeddi copi'r opsiynau ar ystyried gan yr adran gynllunio? No, no, beth ni wedi gweud i'w ni'n barod i ystyried unrhyw syniadau sydd yn dod o gyrff eraill hefyd, a wedi bod yn siarad gyda er enghraifft dyfodol yr iaith, a oedd yna syniadau diddorol dyn nhw, a mae'r ein ystyried wrth gwrs beth sy'n ymarferol, beth dylai gael ei ddod i mewn i fesur a nid mewn i gan llawiaeth, sydd yn rhywbeth hanfodol bwysig yn y system cynllunio, a mae'r gwahoddiad yna dal i fod yna, a ni dal i siarad gyda dyfodol yr iaith ynglyn â rhai o'r pethau maen nhw wedi sôn amdano. Paul Davies. 
Diolch ywydd. Prif wneud rhoi, gallwch chi weud wrthon ni pa gymorth yma Llywodraeth Cymru'n cynnig i awdurdodau lleol i helpu i ddadansoddi i gwybodaeth maen nhw'n casglu ar y iaith Gymraeg. Ac i barau raddau mae'r iaith Gymraeg yn cael ei ystyried yn y ffordd mae tîr yn cael ei defnyddio yn y system gynllunio. Wel, yn ei tîr, mae hi'n bosib wrth gwrs i awdurdodau lleol i sicrhau bod yn gwneud asesiad o ynglyn â'r iaith pa maen nhw'n ystyried yr LDP i hunan. Ac wrth gwrs, mae hi'n bwysig dros ben bod nhw'n ystyried am half o'r tyfas y system cynllunio, maen nhw'n hybu'r iaith. Ac wrth gwrs, mae'n sôn amdano Comisiwn Sir Gar, Comisiwn wrth gwrs oedd yn draws bleidio sydd oedd gofio hanes Sir Gar ddim yn rhywbeth sydd wastu wedi bod yn rhwydd iawn. Ond maen nhw ta beth wedi rhoi argymhellion o flaen cyngor Sir Gar er mwyn cryfhau'r iaith mewn ardal sydd yn holl bwysig i ddyfodol yr iaith. So felly, mae yna gan llawi ar gael yn y system cynllunio. Ni'n barod i ystyried unrhyw beth ymarferol, felly cryfhau y system erlys y Gymraeg ac wrth gwrs ni'n ni wedi helpu llywodraeth lleol i ddeall faint mor bwysig mae'r Gymraeg ac wrth gwrs i fod degyn nhw mae'r yn fwy nhw'n yn gwybod hynny. Er enghraifft ni wedi sicrhau bod na cynlluniau mewn lle ynglyn a darpariaeth i'r iaith Gymraeg yn y system addysg ym mhob awdurdod lleol. Diolch llywydd, mae ymgyrch gan Llywodraeth Cymru, wrth gwrs, ymgyrch clodwyw iawn i wneud y pethau bychain dros y Gymraeg, ond wrth gwrs, mae hefyd yn bwysig bod y Llywodraeth yn cael y pethau mawr yn iawn, a mae yna gyfle yn y bil cynllunio i roi datganiad gwbl glir gan y Llywodraeth yma am le y Gymraeg oedd i fewn i'r drefn bresennol. Allwch chi ddim edrych â i a dweud, dwi'n siŵr eich bod chi'n hapus gyda sefyllfa y Gymraeg o fewn y drefn gynllunio fel y gyma hi, os oddi chi gwedwch hynny. Os ddim, gwedwch wrthon ni beth i chi mynd i wneud? Wel, ar hyn o byd, mae'n anodd i weld am half o'r ddallu fe byl i hunan i grefhau'r Gymraeg. Dwi'n meddwl meddwl bod y drws ar gai felly, ond mae datganiad, mae'n meddwl dim byd. Mae'n rhaid sy'n cyrhau bod yn meddwl datganiad yn cael ei ystyried mewn ffordd ymarferol hefyd. Ac ar hyn o byd, does neb wedi dangos i fi bod bod yna ffordd i ddod i gael rôl i'r iaith Gymraeg yn y bil mewn ffordd yn ymarferol i'r iaith. Mae'n meddwl meddwl felly mae'n ystyried yn y dyfodol. Wrth gweud hynny, wrth gwrs, wel, mae'r system cynllunio, dyna ddim meddwl bod y system cynllunio yn rhyw ffordd o achub yr iaith, os ydych chi'n defnyddio'r fraddau hwnna, wrth i hunan. Ni'n gwybod, wrth gwrs, mae'n rhaid i weud hwn, un o'r problemau yw bod bobl yn symud mynd i dai sy'n barod na, sydd ddim yn siarad y Cymraeg. Am half ffordd, felly, ydych chi'n sicrhau bod nhw'n cael defnyddio'r gael sy'n cael ei ddefnyddio i drwchu yn yr iaith, yn ei wedi i plant nhw. Ni'n gwybod bod nhw wedi gweithio yng ngwynedd. Gobeithio wrth gwrs gweld caniadau dang heredigion a phwysig dros ben bod awdur yr eraill yng Nghymru yn ystyried yr un proses. Ond dwi'n system cynllunio ddim ni ddelio gyda'r problem na o Gymru Gymraeg yn marw yn symud mas a bobl di Gymraeg yn symud mewn. Mae rhaid ffyrdd o ffyrdd eraill i sicrhau bod y bobl hynny yn gallu chwarae'r rhan sylweddol dwi aethog yn ei cymuned yn newydd. Thank you, First Minister. Uh, we now move to item two, which is a business statement.